All right, we're going to put these grips right here on this bike right here. Uh, these grips use have an aluminum sleeve in the middle, so they're 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 hard. It's not rubber except on the outside here. If you notice these little set screws right here, so it's just going to slide up on there. Then we're going to tighten the set screws. Now, when you do these set screws, I'd recommend putting some purple Loctite on there. And be careful because these things will go flying when you take them out. And I don't know if these are metric or standard. So put a little purple Loctite on there before I put them on. So be careful. Us usually set them on a white towel so you can see them. All right. Now you just need a little dab on there. I've got a little, little dab of purple Loctite on both of them. So you're going to put the set screws down towards the bottom here then run them in evenly you don't really want them to be noticeable so usually point them down tighten each one evenly Now, if you wanted to, you could put a little uh, grip glue on here, too, but I've never put it on there before and never had a problem with them coming loose or coming off. So, you just make sure you check the tightness of these set screws once in a while when you're servicing the bike. Should be part of the service when you're doing the service. You go around tighten everything up. These would be included in that, tightening these up. Looks like it's going to rain again. I need to get this done back inside before it starts pouring rain. It's been raining for the past couple of days on and off. And I think it's supposed to rain for the next five or six days again. Now, when you're installing grips like this, you need to make sure that they're all the way up on the bar. So if you have to, loosen the clamp here, loosen the clamp shoe for the switch clamp shell for the switch eyes, and slide them up a little bit if you have to. Uh, you definitely want the grip on there all the way. Now let's put this throttle side on here. Yeah, now this one's kind of self-explanatory. There, there's no uh, no set screws on this one. But you do have to loosen the throttle cables up. To get the right wrenches out here. Alright, so you loosen up your throttle cables. Loosen your lock nuts up. And then screw the, screw the cables all the way in. As far as you can go. You need to take the clamshell off here to get access to the throttle tube. And that's just these two bolts on the clamshell, one on the bottom, bottom one on the top. And I linked a video on uh, 
at the end of this for uh, lubing and adjusting the throttle cables, which I just did on these. I didn't have the grips yet. So I went ahead and lubed and adjusted them before I had these new grips. Now the hard part of that is fishing these uh fishing these ferrules out of the cable. Cause these cables here are actually pretty tight still, even though the adjusters are loose. Let me grab a pick. Okay, these can be a little bit fiddly to get off of here. And I'm gonna try not to lose one of the ferrules because uh I know I've got some in the box around here somewhere, but I really don't feel like looking for them. Put my glasses back on. Some cables are, you have a lot of slack. These ones had basically hardly any slack at all in them, even though they're loose. So I might have to unhook one of these at the carburetor there. I just had to cheat a little bit by pulling the, pulling the cable out of the housing there because I really didn't have enough room. Use just a pair of needle nose pliers, pulled up on it, slide it to the right. It's got a slot on the side of this uh, tube right here. Be able to pull the cable out. Now we've got plenty of room to get the ferrules out. Now you don't have to do that on all carburetors. Uh, or induction modules, whatever you're working on. Sometimes you got plenty of room. This one basically had no no free play at all, even with the adjuster screwed. Had free play when it was adjusted, but not enough to get the ferrule out of the housing here. So let's get our pick up under here so we can get to the cable. And that's just going to slide out of the housing there for maybe just give it a little push.
Yeah, it ain't moving. So. Or doesn't want to move. Give it a yank with the pliers. You do this, it's a good time to check out your cables. Make sure they're not frayed up around the ends here. Got it. So these little ferals, ferals are split down the middle there. Like, like that. And put that in my pocket so I don't lose it. And then this one should just slide out of there too. For whatever reason, these are really tight in this throttle tube. I mean, really, really fucking tight. I don't want to move at all. I mean, mess our damn cables up, but. All right, we got that one. Slide that off of there. Put our new tube on there. Make sure we're not hitting the end of the handlebar here. Since all tubes seem to be slightly different in length. Uh, you can watch that on the other video there. You need to have a little clearance between the end of the grip and the end of the bar or it'll stick the throttle. Or make it not return like it should. You know what? Let me check these ferrules here. They seem to be a little tight on this one, too. Oh, yeah, they're really tight. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to run a drill through the end of this by hand. I'm not going to use a drill to do it, just a drill bit. Until we get it to fit in there perfectly.
All right, well, I measured the ferrules there like 241 thousandths, and then measured the throttle, and the throttle is like 239 thousandths. So we're going to have to drill this thing out by hand. Now I'm just sticking a bit in there. You know, I'm not using a drill because I don't want to mess these things up. I'm not using a, a power drill, I'm just doing it by hand. Just to take off enough material that our ferrule can go in there. And I guess I was wrong. This one's has set screws on it too. Or something. No, I don't screws. Grab something to hold this with.
I have to do both holes here because neither one of them really fit in there. So if you got one that's really tight, whether it's aluminum or plastic, probably need to run a quarter inch drill through there. Just do it by hand. You're not going to hurt anything by doing that. Sure beats spending an hour trying to beat the damn ferrules in there. Okay, let me do the return side here. So I'm going to have to look that up. It seems like that's probably a metric uh, metric size drill. Okay. Yeah. Goes in there now. At least one of them does. Let me check the other one. Might have to run the drill back through here again on this one. We'll find out here in a minute. You really shouldn't have to do this at all, but you know, can't really tell these days. It popped it back in the vise over here. Make sure I get it all the way through there.
Okay, that ought to, that ought to get it. Got them both through there all the way. Now these ferrules are just brass. They do they make steel ones or stainless. All that common some cable kits, but the majority of them are going to be brass. Or copper or bronze or whatever this is. Okay, that one goes in there nice and easy. They, they're both going there fairly decent now. Let's put our stuff back together. This end, end cap just screws back in here. I can't say that I've ever seen one like this before where it screws in. So you know what? I'm gonna put a little I'm gonna put a little blue Loctite on here. Just a little bit. Now really this thing probably would never come loose. But, you know what, it didn't take much to move it. And since your hand's always on the throttle, the chances of, and, and you're actually pulling on it, when you open the throttle, is actually tightening it, so. So it is left-handed threads to go back on there. So whenever you pull the throttle open, it, it tightens it. Okay, let's just see if we can get this grip on here now. Take a little drink. It looks like it's getting ready to start pouring rain again. Okay. Raise this thing up just a hair if I can. That ought to be good. We'll put the return side on first. Just because that's usually the side that gives the most trouble. Damn it. And of course, it's starting to rain now. Just felt it down my neck there. But we're going to get this in here anyway. Since we're already out here. Okay, that's that one. Now let's get this throttle one in here.
okay it's down there let's go ahead and hook our throttle cable back up down here if we can get it in there I think we're in there. I don't think I know we're in there. Damn it. Remember to push the brake lever back in when you're putting the clamshell down so you don't break the brake light switch. Thank God for magnets. I lost the damn screw or dropped it. Get our screw started here and hit the brake lever again to make sure that thing's not jammed up. Yeah, we're good there. So on earlier models, like 91 and earlier, 92 and earlier, whatever, whenever they changed the brake light stuff on this thing, the switch housings, I can't remember. The brake light switch is in the housing here, but if the brake master cylinder and the clamshell have any gap right here, your brake light will stay on. With uh, this setup, the brake light switch, it'll usually stay on if the mass or come on by itself. If the, if the little plastic cap on the end of the master cylinder piston's worn out. So if you got a bike that's going down the road and you see his brake light flashing a little bit, it's usually his master cylinder, a little thing's worn out. So we're going to go ahead and readjust these throttle cables, make sure that the throttle's opening all the way. And that our uh, throttle is actually returning like it should. We'll take some of the free play out of there a little bit. Now, your free play here, I, I explained it in the other video. It's like a personal preference. A lot of people like them where it's, you got a hell of a gap in there. Uh, from racing, road racing, I like to have the throttle where there's basically almost no end play in it. So if, if you find that when you cut your, your throttle's not returning like it should, say you turn the bars to the right and the throttle wants to stick when the, it's all the way on the right, you can get add a little more free play to it. But really, that's about it. You can check it out in that other video. Just, let me make sure this throttle's opening all the way. It should be. You're just going to look at that down on the side of the carburetor there. And you can feel it with your finger by pressing up on it. If you press up on it and it moves, moves any at all, it's, it's not open and full throttle. 
and we are at full throttle, so we're good. Tighten these things down. And it should, shouldn't really be a big deal doing this. Usually you just put the grips on there and they slide right on, but not on this one for whatever reason. Well, because the uh, damn... I guess, I'm guessing they used a metric uh, drill or something to or worn out tooling, whatever. When they cut the when they cut those tubes for uh, the ferrules. Okay, we're good. And since I just lubed these and put silicone on the sleeves here, I don't have to do it again for a while. Really didn't plan on having to machine them things to fit. But it is what it is. And that's pretty much for those grips. I, I kind of like them. They, they look good on there. Got the little cutouts on the end of the grip there. Look fairly decent. See how they hold up. They look good. They, they weren't they weren't the cheapest things in the world, but that, the truth is they weren't really expensive either. Less than twenty bucks for what you're getting, other than having to machine them yourself to fit there. But that could be a one-off thing. So anyway, that's grip insulation there with a couple of little extra tips. So. Thank you. 
we'll be riding again here shortly if it ever quits raining. Uh, but that's it for the grips there. I think they look fairly good. Let's go through and make sure your throttle's returning. Make sure you lock everything down on the grips so they're not sliding off, slip sliding away. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. You guys have a fantastic weekend. And thanks for subscribing. Thanks for liking this. Thanks for watching. Everybody take care. Have a great weekend.